talking PGA Tour on... What is this called again? Wells Fargo. <laughs> Tee off with Jan Stevenson. Oh, the Wells great. Fargo okay. Championship. Got so many channels, I got to think about it sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we had another kind of uh, week on the PGA Tour last week. It was... Yeah, yeah it... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Byron Nelson, it's an easy golf course, as we know. Uh, but, um, you know, I think as far as the drama at the end, it was unfortunate to see, not that Pendrith won, but it was unfortunate to see that a couple of the guys, especially uh, Coles, choked it out. That, that, that's not what you want to see. I mean, that's been the theme of all these non Scheffler win. I think the last three non Scheffler wins, right, are Akshay, who, you know, won when McCarthy loved the pitching wedge. You had Rory and Lowry win when uh, it was a trainer, and um, I can't remember who that team was. They, uh, you know, they, they blew it on the first playoff hole. Oh, yeah, the week before. Cole. Yeah. And then you had Coles choke it away. So, I mean, and the, the quality of play in a lot of these tournaments, uh, is lacking. I think it's you know, it's it's definitely a, a live a live thing. Well, I mean, you know, it, it's strange too the fact that I mean John Rahm, he can have all the top tens on the live tour that he wants, but nobody's really impressed with the fact that he hasn't won. Mm -hmm. So, and by the way, Coles, I know winning the KFT tour is nothing like winning, of course, on the PGA tour. But I guess this is a guy we, we, we should probably keep an eye on. I mean, he won twice on the KFT tour in 2023. So, um, you know, I he guess. Played, I mean, he played awesome on Sunday until the last hole. <laughs> yeah, so. that's that's when you kind of felt uh, if he already had a win on the PGA tour, it would have been nice. But, hey, it is what it is. You got to live and learn. Uh, matter of fact, Norin missed a pretty easy one on 18 too, and, and and if he would have needed that one, that would have been weak to miss that one. Yeah, but he he still would have been one short, right? Yeah, he would. Yeah, mm -hmm. he would have been one yeah. short. Yeah. So, but if Pendrith would have choked right. like Coles, then it'd been oh, well, that was pretty weak too. So, because again, Norin hasn't won on the PG tour, but yeah, another strong showing from Benny Ann without winning. Um, Keith Mitchell was kind of in the mix, still he wasn't. There's a lot of these guys playing well, but can't quite get over the line. Well, now we get ready for back-to-back -back big weeks on the PGA Tour. We have a signature event followed by a major. And then uh, a few weeks after that, we have a huge three-week stretch where we have signature, major, signature. So um, this is going to be a heck of a, what, Eight weeks, six weeks, seven weeks. How how would you count? Let's see. How many weeks is this? Yeah, it's got to be close to two two so two months, right? One, I mean. two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. Seven weeks. We have five big events. The other two will be the Charles Schwab. That's Colonial. Uh, that's after Valhalla, and that'll be a week event. You can rest assured to be a lot of a lot of players skipping that one, and the Canadian Open. And that'll be interesting to see who plays in that um, because of the three-week stretch coming up following that. Uh, by the way, you know, that's that's why I, I think that – I know we, we kind of texted each other back and forth about Zalatoris, and he backed out last week because his back flared up. And, of course, he had major back surgery last year. Okay, first of all, what in the world is he doing playing in that stupid Zurich yeah. Classic event? Yeah, no. When he has an event the following week, which would be four events in four weeks, and it's basically it's his hometown event. I, I mean, somebody has to talk to him. I mean, he's not getting good advice. I don't know what's going on there. And so when he backs out of the event last week, it's like, of course he backed out of the event last week. What did you think he was going to play six straight weeks? Yeah, I'm hoping that was a, you know, quote unquote, back flare up. It has to be. Mad wanted a week off and and i and i i bet zell Torres this week and we'll get into him but my thinking is that if he's not at 100 percent, he's going to withdraw from this tournament pre-tourney hopefully 
and I'll get my money back. <clears throat> uh, and if he does end up playing, he sure as hell better be at 100%. Because there's no other reason to be, you know, playing here if he's not. Um, so, you know, that's why I felt comfortable betting him. But, you know, there obviously is some risk if, you know, he did have some sort of you know, setback with that back issue. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, come on. It's, uh, it just doesn't make any sense because uh, that would be a six straight week run. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. I mean, come on. You're just not going to do that. I just, I don't understand why he played doubles, which is really what that yeah. is. I mean, go, is he sponsored by Zur- Zurich. <laughs> right. I mean, why else? I don't understand. So, uh, yeah, somebody has to talk to him. He's not getting good advice. Uh, but we'll see. Like you said, we'll, we'll find out if it really was the back. I doubt it uh, because I really like him this week as a one and done. And that's going to mm-hmm. be obviously a little bit of a risk, but um, that all depends. I mean, because uh, there's a few other players I also like. Unfortunately, I don't have him available in one and done. So I might just take the risk. So, but we'll get into that in just a little bit. And uh, also wanted to update of course the fact that as you know scotty scheffler not playing this week his wife hasn't given birth yet but we're you know he's uh, he's definitely hoping big time that it happens this week uh and this is going to be very very uh boy what kind of drama next week because i gotta believe if she doesn't give birth this week which is the week she's supposed to basically and he goes in the next week at the pga I wouldn't feel good about, you know, I'd feel really, ten, you just talked about, we just talked about Zalatoris. I mean, I'd feel even more iffy putting money on Scheffler next week and then having him take the lead going into the final round or the third round and he just leaves. Because that's yeah, what he wonder. said. He said he would leave at, at Masters if she gave birth. Yeah. Masters wonder, is bigger than a PGA. I, I wonder if there's a C- c-section coming uh at some point within the next uh you know the times have changed i mean it's i mean you go back maybe 20 years these things never happened yeah you know and, and and this is all about money the players have so much money especially like if you're talking about uh on the pga tour scheffler has so much money that he could ever need of course he's going to elect to say, ah, you know, I'll, I'll, I've got 15 more tries at this. I'm, I'm, I'm the best player in the world. I'll take the week off. You know, it's, it's this is an important moment in my life. They never did that. You never, never. If you were playing professional sports in any sporting event 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, bad timing, can't be there, got to make a living. Yep. So, Don't have that excuse anymore. No, it's not. So... <laughs> Fingers crossed, everybody would like to see him be there because that'll be, we talked about it last week with the specials, the major specials especially. Um, uh, but one of those signature specials is already out. So hopefully you didn't put any money on that. Well, you got your money back, I guess. Or did you? Maybe you don't get your money back on that one. I don't know. I Usually usually you don't with futures. That's kind of the risky part about betting futures. You know, If you were to bet someone now for the PGA championship next week and that player ends up not in the field or whatever you usually don't get your money back there okay so before we talk about this week just a little bit on the pga i've uh, a little bit of prep pga information if, you know you want to put some money on it this week uh, as we've talked about it before if you didn't already go into your futures library a few months ago it's kind of late. You might as well just wait until next week. But, hey, everybody's different. You want to take a look at it this week? I'll give you a quick, quick a couple of things here. Uh, Americans have won eight straight PGA championships. That's a little strange. Um, and how about this? There have been three repeat champions in a row. So we've had Mickelson, uh, Justin Thomas, and Brooks Kapka. They've won. Uh, so it's I think it's three Kepka, two Thomas, two Mickelson. Uh, Kepka has won three of the last six, and <laughs> five of the last seven have been won between Justin Thomas and Brooks Kepka. Oh wow, that's right. Hmm. You know the scoring the last three years have been tougher at the PGA Championship than the U.S. Open. 
It's been 9, 5, and 6 at the PGA and 10, 6, and 6 at the U.S. Open. It didn't used to be like that. The PGA used to be the one you could kind of go low, low at. But, yes. you know, they went pretty... They went pretty low at Valhalla uh, last time, or I think Rory won. I think he, I think he got into the teens. He did sixteen under par. Yeah, so I'm curious to, uh, you know, hopefully find out whether they've made it tougher this go around. Let's see, Valhalla. I believe the first one, I believe it was in 1996, and in 1996 it was 11 under par, and then after that, Tiger won in 2000 at 18 under par and then they came back in uh that was rory after that 2014 i believe unless i missed one um by the way just to show you we talked about this before with tiger and his competition back in the day do you know who he beat in the playoff of course you don't know no bob (laughs) may that's who he had to beat in a playoff to win a major bob how much, may how much money would you pay to be able to you know transport prime tiger into like right oh, now wouldn't that be awesome facing scotty and, and rom and ludwig coming up and yeah that'd, that'd be that'd be fun to see and again we all know it's it, it, we're not taking away the fact that tiger would still have 75 oh, yeah. percent of his wins but i don't know how many of that 25 percent he'd have yep agreed so um different time but hey tiger created this yeah so yep all right that's next week this week we have the wells fargo and this is important to note that out of the eight 20 events they played the wells fargo 18 of them have been at quell hollow club two of them were not uh 2000 i forget one of them was president's cup i believe and the other was pj championship yep and so, yeah i think it was what 2017 was the pga yes. and then 2022 the president's cup was here and then they did not have an event in 2020 um obviously uh and so that means 18 events that's all we're going to be looking at so if you take a look like i say at max homa one in 2022 well we don't care because Max Homa won at a completely different golf course. But interesting that he won on both courses. Yeah. So good for him. Now, Brian Harmon is the other one. So Brian Harmon winning at, uh, I forget which one it was, but he won outside of Quahalo. Hollow. So uh, that's important to note. Now, here's a, here's something, too, that'll help trends. Uh, out of the 18 winners at Quahalo, Hollow, 10 of them are major champions. And that's interesting because the last 11 first-time winners ranked outside the top 10, okay, the last 11 first-time winners had an average rank of 210 before winning here. And if you remove Derek Ernst, who won back in 2013, he was ranked 1207. It still drops down to 110. Um, Five of 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 the last eight first-time winners ranked outside the top 100. And 11 of the last 13 first-time winners made four appearances or less. Seven of those made just two appearances or less. So I also think that's important to note because obviously with the signature event, there are now players playing here that haven't played here maybe before. So that Mm -hmm. will probably continue to go down that road. But don't you think that's interesting that you have all of these players that have won this event with high rankings and outside the top 10, yet 10 of them are major champs. Or, I mean, I know at least Wyndham wasn't a major champ when he won here. I, th- I think you know, we, we've seen some, like, breakthrough-type wins at this course. Um, but but the major connection does make sense because this is a major quality golf course, right? It's, it it's is. Long, it's tough. Um, so it's a uh, yeah, perfect tune-up for next week. And uh, famous last words, I've been saying this a lot this season but I'd, I'd be surprised if like you know someone came out of nowhere to win this thing based on it being a signature event yeah yeah i mean yeah the fact that it's it's no cut helps sort of you know separate uh you know the elites and then just this again you know this i, I always think these tougher longer golf courses um puts less emphasis on putting so just sort of makes it uh 
less volatile than an event like last week. Yeah, the 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 fact that and we're gonna get into your um, stats here in just a sec, but the the fact that I mean that that is I mean what do you think is is that like even though it's not in your stats I don't believe, but don't you think that that's like if you're looking at just one stat that's very important is you have to be not necessarily a dominantly power driver. It's just that anybody that's maybe outside the top, I'd say 120 of driving. If you're on the low end of the average, I think yeah. if you're borderline, you're okay. But if once you start getting to like that, that 120 and, and further up, and that includes players like Colin Morikawa and such, um, they don't win here. Well, it's <laughs> it's funny you say that because I actually have this stat. Six of the last seven winners at Quail Hollow have ranked top 15 in driving distance for that season. Wow, it's been even oh, for that season. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to throw out someone that's not top 15. Sure. But if you're, you know, if you're 50th in this field, even 40th in this field of 70 guys in driving distance, you know, it's, I'm, I'm probably going to be, be crossing you off my list. I, I, I definitely want long hitters this week. Yeah, let's take a look at the stats, though. Uh, let's take a look at your stats. Besides, of course, you've got the top 10 in course history. Uh, uh, and I'm going to get into that in just a second. But top 10 on difficult score, scoring courses over 7,400 yards. So there you go. Difficult courses, you know, long long yardage and so forth. So they're usually the top 10. And then I'm also going to throw in a top 10 on par fours, as you can see, between 450 and 500. That's just for 2024. Uh, so these are all your stats, Jared. And I'm going to ask you, I was surprised. I mean, that must be like by like a 0. .00 that Justin Thomas is, is the top guy. I wouldn't have thought that. I would have thought Rory's got to be the top guy or even Ricky Fowler, who's right there. But wow, how is just I'm surprised Justin Thomas is number one. So I used the last five tournaments at Quail Hollow so that the, the fifth one in there is the PGA that Thomas won. So it's you know it's that PGA Championship and then the last four Wells Fargo's they got played. it. So you're including so the PGA Championship. Yeah. So got that's it. what bumps uh, JT up to the top. Um, okay. Then yeah, the um, you know difficult scoring courses. That's kind of just another way to look at course fit here, right? And just this is the type of course we want to look at: long courses, tough scoring courses. Since 2022, 20, gives us a bigger sample. A lot of big names up there. You know, no major surprises to me, I guess. Besides Russell Henley pops up at six. Um, and then these long par fours, so par fours between 450 and 500. Um, there are six holes on this course that fit in that in that exact bucket, and then three more that are within six yards in either direction. So basically, half the holes on this course are par fours between 450 and 500. So okay. that's super important this week. Um, again, a lot of familiar names. I think Akshay surprisingly comes in fourth on this list. And then to me, I was surprised to see guys like Cantley and Spieth at five and nine here. High, you know, good players that aren't having good seasons, but have still done well on these long par four. So that was interesting to me. Yeah, Cantley's actually one of those players that's right about the cutoff line of average as far as the driver, and that's uh, of course we're talking about everybody on tour. So yeah, that's a uh, matter of fact. If I was just looking at that one, the one that would stick out to me is Cantley. If I was because mm -hmm. I was out of all the players that his odds are low, I don't like. He's not the most powerful driver. I don't like not having a great year. I don't like, but so those are the things bringing me down. But I'm I was still like you know what you know I like the fact that you know he had the improvement from first time around to second. He's trending in the right direction. Third at RBC last time out, you know, and I still have him available in my one and dones. So. Mm -hmm. It was good that you had that stat. That that made it a little bit. That makes it a little bit easier for me to go. Yep. Oh, okay, so if I want to take Cantley this week, I've got that on my side. Yeah, and the RBC uh, performance from him was nice. It was a lot of iron play, which had been an issue previously. Cantley's his other good finish this season came at, at Genesis, um, which I think is a pretty good comp course for Quail Hollow. Okay, by the way, I'm going to uh, pop up our picks. So there are picks. Jared has three. I have five. Jared does not know my picks this week. So uh, we're going to start. I'm going to throw up the – here are the odds. So Rory is the favorite. Now, this is scary for Rory to be the favorite. 
And again, no Scheffler, no uh, Oberg, uh, Ludwig out. And he, uh, now that I would be a little bit uh, concerned about for next week because they're saying yeah. there's something wrong with his knee. Yep. So, I, I mean, it's hard enough to take a kid that, that is that young. I don't care how good he's playing, but it's real hard to take a kid like that in a major – and all that other stuff, and now you're dealing one week uh, one week before that, he's withdrawing from an, an event because he says there's something wrong with his knee. And he hasn't played in a few weeks, so it's not like Zalatoris, where you're thinking, right. ah, yeah, back, okay. If he says he's got something wrong with his knee, and this is a signature event, you, you kind of believe it. Yeah, I'm curious to see what we hear uh, between now and next Thursday. Curious to see if his odds drift at all. You know, If he starts to get uh, closer to 20 to 1, I'd be more interested. Assuming that the knee is okay. Okay. Now, uh, let's slide down some of these uh, odds as we go along. All right, McElroy. Um, look, this is – if you have McElroy in one and done, I, I think he's definitely somebody that you have to keep an eye on this week. No question yep. about it. He's, this is a very good golf course for him. He's made 10 of 11 cuts. He's a three-time champ, and it's kind of spread out really well. 2010, 2015, 2021, maybe you wait another year or two, but it's still in that kind of zone where, hey, you know, it's like every five years or so, he kind of wins this event. And now the only thing that I don't like is, is he has one top five this year on the PGA Tour, and he's trending in the wrong direction. Now, I'm willing to forgive the RBC because we know he didn't like the place. He didn't want to be there. So the 33rd is almost like, you know, he was just probably walking around the golf course, didn't care. Um, but still, he is trending in the wrong direction. But those are some of the negatives. And the other one, obviously, is he's six to one. Yeah, Rory definitely not a bet for me at six to one. Definitely, I still have him in one and done. I actually have all three of these uh, top guys on the odds board left in one and done. So I'm definitely picking between those three. Um, I. I like all three of them this week on this golf course. But yeah, I mean, this is just a tailor-made golf course for Rory, right? Like long, got to be a good driver, um, and he's obviously had the success here. So that, I, I'm with you. Um, he's he, he's the best one and done play this week. I'm looking at our at our one and done too. He's only available, you know, for 56 percent of teams. So basically, half the teams have already used Rory. So I don't think he'll be super 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 popular because of that. Interesting. Okay. Well, that I feel a little bit better about that, um, but. I don't have them. I, I'm always, you know, for everybody out there, but especially when we're talking about the difference between whether you're taking them, uh, again, with your picks or a one and done, I, I just, I think he's definitely a much better one and done this week. Yep. And I think we sure. both agree. Not going to take him at six to one, but go with him at one and done for sure. Okay. Shoffle, second last year the good thing is he's been better in all three of his events so he's improved each time out including matter of fact he was five over in his first two appearances combined and went 15 under last year so that was a big jump um i don't like the fact that he's trending in the wrong direction it's a it's incremental uh, but it's still all top 20s and that's just the kind of season xander's had um mm -hmm. the only negative again getting nine to one so i understand where you're coming from Coming off second last year here, he doesn't have to worry about Scotty Scheffler. Um, but uh, I don't know. Um, I see what you're saying. I just don't like the fact he's trending in the wrong direction, even as small as it is. But I understand. Yeah, I expect him to play well. I think expect him to top 10. Um, he's first in my model this week. He does everything you'd want to see a guy do for this golf course. Betting wise, he should not be ninety one. I, you know, we'll get into Wyndham here. I think Wyndham and Xander should be flipped on this odds board. I think you can make Wyndham Clark nine to one, and that 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 would make sense to me. All right. Next up is uh, Clark, and Clark is your top pick. So why not? Right? Uh, he's sixteen yep. to one. And to see, this is also if, you t if we're talking about some of these players we just mentioned that have gotten better each time here. Well, Clark's a perfect example. Missed the cut seven over par, forty third last year, uh, two years ago two over par. Last year nineteen under par in his win. He's coming off a third at the RBC. He's had some time off, so yeah. Uh, can Wyndham Clark win back to back here? Why not? Yeah, one one here, one U.S. Open, another you know long tough golf course. Um, 
has what come second to Scotty Scheffler twice already this season at the <laughs> at the players in API. So you know, take Scheffler out of there, and you know, Wyndham might have three wins this year. Um, so yeah, again, I, I sixteen to one is is a a low number for me. I usually you know don't dip up below twenty too often, but I, again, I think I think Clark should be nine or or ten to one here. So I think sixteen to one is actually value. I agree, hundred percent. It's almost kind of, you know, but that's been the deal, hasn't it? I mean, when we think he should be fifteen to one, he's thirty to one, and when we yeah, think he should right. be ten to one, he's sixteen to one. Yeah. yeah. So hey, all right, look, um, he and eighty now eighty percent have him in one and done in our league. Yeah. I got to think there's gonna be a lot of people taking him this week, don't you think? He'd be my pick for most owned which is surprising to say because rory's history here but um just the fact that so many people still have wyndham um yeah he's he's definitely going to be popular okay now you have Cantley, 18 to 1 and then we have three players at 22 to 1 homa jt and morikawa now we just talked about Cantley. uh homa as a two-time winner of the event again he won at tpc uh potamic in 2022 and then he won uh, last year, excuse me, he won in 2000 and uh, what was it, 17, right? I believe it was. Um, no, that wasn't 2017. It was another 19, year. was it? Uh, yeah, 19. It might have, might have been 19, yeah. Yep. Um, so, uh, matter of fact, if you look at it in the last three years, actually, if you look at it in his four appearances, he's been hit or miss here. 76th yep. and a missed cut, first and eighth. So, and he's been really inconsistent this year. Uh, with only two top tens, his his one top five was the Masters, which is like, where did that come from at Augusta? He had never played that well at Augusta before, so he's been really hard to handicap this 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 year, and that's why I just I don't think this would be a good week to take him because of that, because this is one of those obvious weeks, and I'm just I'd rather take Max maybe in a week where nobody's expecting him to win. That's kind of been his mo yeah. this year. Uh, what about you? Yeah, I'm I'm with you there. Um, I obviously love the course history here. Love the course fit. We always say we want home on, you know, longer, tough golf courses. That the form though just isn't where I want it to be. Like he has the third at the Masters, but fifty fifth at RBC and then twenty fifth at Valero and sixty fourth at the players, you know, kind of sandwiching that Masters outing and you know, the ball striking numbers still haven't been like typical Max Homa, so um not quite there with him. If uh actually I already I already I was gonna say if he plays well this week I will like him next week of the PGA, but I already have a, a Max Homa bet for next week that I placed about a month ago. So ho- hoping to see him uh, play well this week to carry some form into next week. All right. Now, Justin Thomas, uh, he's now down to 22 to one. So um, now I was actually a, still able to get him, uh, but he was 30 to one yeah. yesterday. I was able to get him still. At, actually, I don't know if I got him at 30 or 25 to 1 on my sports book. But I really like Justin this week. And why not? Um, not only uh, does he fit your your stat there of best last five on this golf course, including mm-hmm. his PGA Championship win. Yep. Um, and, and he's been consistent here. He's missed one cut. Besides that, everything 26 or better. So very consistent here. And he's coming off at fifth at the RBC, which was very important because he wasn't playing all that well. So the fifth at RBC, without that, I'm not feeling this good. But the lasting memory of Justin Thomas a few weeks ago was a solid showing again. Here's the other thing. I digged into this research. How about this? The week before a major or specifically the PJ Championship. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was fifth at the Byron Nelson. The week before his 2022 PJ Tour, PJ Championship win, he was third in Canada. The week before he played the U.S. Open in 2022, he won the week before the PGA Championship in 2020, and he won the week before the PGA Championship in 2018. And what was that? A WGC event, basically mm-hmm. a signature event. So, oh. He was fourth the week before the PGA Championship in 2015 at the Quicken Loans. So he just really gears up. Nice. The week before the PGA Championship, 
And of course, yeah. he's got two PGA Championship wins. So for all that together, and that's why uh, if I had him on one and done, I'd take him. But I just I've already used him, um, so I'm definitely taking him as one of my picks this week. Yeah, I think yeah, I've used him in one and done too. Um, yeah, I, I like the bat. Um, yeah, the RBC performance was nice. He he gained across the board off the tee approach around the green and putting. Really, the approach play has remained strong for JT all season. It's the driver and the putting that has sort of come and gone, and that's sort of what's you know. Uh, influenced his his finishes so if he can figure those things out the, the approach play has been good enough to win i know we we've been saying really since the start of the year we think jt is going to get at least one win this season I, I, st- I still believe that he's another guy that i think is live uh next week obviously so hopefully he uh if he doesn't win hopefully he at least plays well and, and builds some momentum yeah did did we did uh, did you put money on him at the i PGA? don't have jt i don't have jt for next week yet he definitely could be an ad for me what is he right now? Do you know? Before I have to switch that over, I don't know offhand. Let me see because I actually, I think, I think I have him in a PGA. I do. I, I, I did put future money on him in the PGA. Nice. So, Where'd you get him at? I don't know, but I, I, I did that. I think I did it early enough when he was probably, you know, thirty or something like that. Might have been yeah. thirty-five. Um, he might still be. Uh, let's see. Are you pulling up? He might still be. Yeah, matter of fact, um, I have Clark, Morikawa, Ustazen, uh, JT, Cameron Smith, and Cam Young as futures. Cool. Yeah, JT's 30, JT's 30 to 1 right now, if you want him. He's still 30 to 1. Yep. Yeah, it's, that ain't bad. No, not at all. Because if he wins this week, that'll go down to like 18 to 1. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so he, he's, he, he's not a bad player right now for next week. Morikawa. Now we just talked about it. This is you wouldn't you would think that this is just not no matter how hot he is and he's hot. And I just said it. I have him. I put him on my futures uh, a couple of weeks ago when he started getting hot on the PJ Championship because yep. I I think I got him at twenty five to one, which is nothing great. But I said to myself, yeah, but I could still see him dropping from twenty five to one because this is how hot he is. Look, the fact that he's played here once and missed a cut at four over par, I think, is a telling sign. Now, it could be one of two things. Just could be like we talked about the rest of them. They just need to be here a second time and a third time, and then he'll get it. But he's not a powerfully, you know, strong driver, and I think that's going to work yeah. against him. And I think you would probably agree with that. For sure. And man, Morikawa is tricky too, even for next week because the the iron play still hasn't been there for him which is usually his bread and butter um you know, even when he came now he did i believe he gained strokes approach at the masters i don't i don't have that data on fantasy national there's no strokes gain data but even at um heritage last time last time out when he came ninth he still lost strokes on approach that's four four of his last five events now he's lost strokes on approach and this is a guy that has been you know one of the best iron players in the entire world for you know the previous couple of years so something's still up with the irons um definitely not betting him this week and it, you know, if, if you are on him next week i would definitely like to you know see a better approach performance from him this week yeah and and, and by the way this is going to be a good uh, telling tale because of the fact that if he plays well knowing it works against him here the course that's yeah. going to be a good sign if he doesn't sure. then you're probably right then uh it, it's 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 probably not a good bet to think that he could put it all together and win the PGA championship in one week. Yep. Okay. Now we have Hovland, Fleetwood, the gala and cam young. Now <laughs> two of these are my picks and I know, you know, which ones they are. Uh, cam young for sure. No, no, no. Tommy. That was Tommy. tricky. I tricked you. Yeah. Tommy. Tommy and Sahith. Okay. Nice. So he's my top pick. Matter of fact, um, he would also be it would be JT and Sahith for my one and done, but I took them all. I already got them, so I can't take them. But he's my top pick this week, Sahith. Um, and look, last year he he only played here once, and he finished fifty sixth, one over par. So I do believe you can you can go from one bad to one good. We've seen it happen before here. The difference is Sahith has more of a power game. He's not like a bomber or anything like that, but he does have more of uh, the power game than some of these other players that we just talked about. Uh, you know, I think he's in the top 50, top 60. So he's one of those guys. 
Um, but look, he's so confident right now. Coming off the runner-up at RBC, he's had some time off. Um, he's played big in big events this year, signature events. Sixth at Bay Hill, ninth at Players, the second at RBC. He was fifth at Phoenix, as we remember, even though that wasn't a signature event this year. But look, bottom line is, is see, I don't know yet if he can win a major. But I think the next step is the signature event. Yeah, I think he can win a major. I mean, maybe not this year. I'm not, no, no, yeah, but I'm, not this year. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely buying stock in Sahith long term, as I think we've talked about. I do like him this week. Sahith and Cam Young were the last two guys off my list uh, as as bets this week. You know, 20, 25 on either was just a bit short for me. I, I I'm still fine with. It. I just liked the other guys a bit better than I ended up betting. But um, yeah, Sahith is so. Well, first of all, he's 16th in this field in driving distance, so I think distance is not an issue for him he's long enough and then he you know he's he's fifth in my model for the week um behind actually sorry he's fourth now that uh ludwig is out it's you know xander windham rory one two three and then sahith is is next for me he he's a really good bermuda putter too he's the fourth best bermuda putter in this field and these are uh bermuda green so that's another mark in his favor yeah, the one thing with Cam that I just didn't like is I didn't like him trending in the wrong direction. Yep. So I don't like that. But I look, and the other thing too is this is important for anybody that is, again, going into this and you're looking at the two different golf courses is that Cam Young was sixth at TPC Potomac, six under par. Again, finishing second is a big difference than finishing, than finishing 59th last year at Quail Hollow at two over par. But you would think that this would be a golf course that would work, that would really be tailor made for him. So I completely understand what you're saying. And that's why the only reason that I'm not taking him is like you, you put, pointed one of them. The odds are a little low for me, just a little bit, because yeah. he's not exactly playing great. You know, he's playing okay once every you know month, once every four events. Um, mm-hmm. But the other thing is he's trending in the wrong direction. So. But I also have Fleetwood. Not forget about Hovland. Anybody that thinks of taking Victor Hovland right now, you are just playing with fire because yeah. look, he is he, he's taken ex- all this additional time off because his game is just crap. Um, he does have a third place finish here in his first appearance, forty third last year. But in his last five events, his best finish is nineteenth. He's coming off a miss <clears throat> a miss cut at the Masters, and. I just I don't even he shouldn't even be twenty five to one, okay he should be forty to one this week. <laughs> yeah. I mean seriously that's what they put Wyndham Clark for crying out loud some some of these weeks. Victor Hovland yeah. is not playing twenty five to one. No, yeah I'm, I'm with you forty to one's a better representation of where he's at. I think he, he's still probably people are probably still batting him at twenty five to one because of the name because of his history here. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be shocked. I mean, listen, he, he's going to figure it out, but I think I think we'll see some signs of him getting it figured out before he wins. He's not going to go from, you know, what has he gone? He's gone 60 second at the players and then miscut at the Masters. I, he's not going to go from that to winning Wells Fargo. I think it'll be you know more more gradual um, return to his prior form. As far as um, Fleetwood. I like the fact that he has trended really well here at this event. He's a miscut to a 14th to a 5th. So he's been better each time out. 11 under par last year here. He's coming off a kind of a disappointing 49th at the RBC because he was playing well heading into that one. So I'm willing to give him a little bit of a blip. He's had a few more weeks off. And um, look, it's 25 to 1. Do I want that? No. He should be 30 to 1 um, at least. But, you know, I think this is just the deal. Um, but, you know, I, I also I think that the, the reason why I have him on my picks and we talked about this uh, and I, f- I think this was I forget when this was. Maybe it was might have been before the Masters. I think it was because he played well the week before the Masters is that Tommy Fleetwood is another player like Rory McElroy, And we just mentioned it with Justin Thomas. Those are probably the three best players in this field that have shown good results the week before they play in a major mm. so and i looked at them all and you know it's, it's it's a lot of research but when i look at them all those are the guys that stand out mcelroy fleetwood and jt okay uh, now siwu was dropped to 30 to 1 mm. uh, he was 40 to 1 i believe yesterday zalatoris 
Zalatoris is 35 to 1. Uh, Fitzpatrick is 35 to 1. See, you've got Zalatoris and Fitzpatrick, Mm -hmm. and you should at 35 to 1. What are they doing in this category? Sam Burns has done nothing. Tony Finau is just, I mean, he's not the player he used to be. Mm-hmm. Siwoo Kim, all he's doing is, yeah, he hasn't missed cuts and he's top 30, man, but it, he yeah. doesn't he didn't even contend last week. And he's 30 to 1. Uh, Matsuyama is 35 to 1. Ben An is 35 to 1. But let's just start here with these guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's got to be in this group, Zalatoris and Fitzpatrick, but definitely Zalatoris, as we talked about. Um, he did miss the cut. Uh, in 2021 and his only appearance here at four over par um i don't need to go back into the whole idea of of the fact that we just don't care about that um but yeah to to what to me and i guess to you too it's all about does he tee it up on thursday and if he does that means his back's fine and right. and maybe that's why he's 35 to 1 i don't know i can't i can't see any other reason other than maybe they're looking at the miscut in his only appearance fitzpatrick he he's similar to cam young Second at TPC uh, Potomac a couple years ago, 35th Mm -hmm. last year here, even though he was three under par. Fitzpatrick is also trending in the wrong direction, but uh, the thing that sticks out for me more than anything is the fact that you're getting 35 to one on him. Right. I'm definitely not a Fitzpatrick guy. I don't bet him often. He, to me, is always a tough guy to predict. Like, I don't really see any, like, trends or patterns in his game. (laughs) I know, it's hard. I'm kind of nailing down. Um, but yeah, 35 to one on a tough golf course where I like fits. I mean, this is a U.S. Open winner. Um, he he just missed our li- our uh, top ten on difficult courses list, but he's 11th. He's the 11th best okay. player in this field on those tough golf courses. Um, so yeah, that that number just stuck out to me. Like I don't think he should be behind uh, you know, most of these guys at you know 35 and 30 to one. And Zal Zal Torres opened on DraftKings Monday morning at 55 to one. I woke what was up, that? Uh, 55 to 1. 55 is what I actually got him at. I woke up Monday morning, saw it, bet it immediately. Jeez. I mean, yeah, he's, you know, he had the he had a serious back issue and he withdrew last week. I get the risk, but again, my thing is if he I hope that if he's not at 100%, he's going to withdraw today or tomorrow and then we just get our money back. If he ends up teeing it up even at 35 to 1, um what uh Zale Torres was second on our list of best players on tough golf courses. I say it all the time. Tough for the golf course. The more I like Zal Torres, so this is definitely a good spot for him. Yeah, I think it is. So, and again, I'm gonna. I, I feel ninety percent sure that he's playing. So, okay. Um, and then again, Burns just isn't doing anything. Uh, and and see, see what Kim. Look, if he's forty to one, actually, I was considering it, but <laughs> I do. I I did not take him though. And it, again, it was close, but the 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 the, the, the uh, only reason, the main reason I, I went away from him, is just not a power hitter. He's not a, it, it, that's not his game. And I looked at his two visits here. Forty third is his best, so that's a red flag. That's why I took him out. But I would never consider him at thirty to one. Um, mm-hmm. Keep this in mind. He was second the week before the PGA Championship last year. Um, and he does play a lot. I noticed he plays a lot the week before a major. Not a lot of players do. He's comfortable doing it. But yeah, thirty to one is just uh, too short. Yep, agreed. What do you need to see out of Tony Finau before you start getting interested in him? You know, I I briefly considered him this week. I like him on these longer golf courses. Um, he continues to hit it well. Just doesn't ever putt well enough to win um bermuda is also easily his worst surface oh is it okay he, you know, he's a guy i want either on you know the west coast poa or as we get more you know northeast with the bent grass is actually his his best putting surface he really struggles on on bermuda so um, okay. that, that was for me to knock him off my list uh matsuyama is also you're getting 35 to 1 with hideki but Hideki's played here five times he's made the cut all five but you know yep. his best finish was 11 so he doesn't have a top 10 uh, he's had a month off. I believe he hasn't played since Masters, so I guess he must have chose RBC as his one. Because um, he can, you have one of those, right? Where you you don't have to play the signature event. I, th- I think that's what it was. Yeah, you could skip one of them. Yeah, I'm surprised Rory didn't skip the RBC. I wonder why he did that. It must have been another reason. Maybe he has to skip something else later in the year, or I don't know. Um, I was I don't know. He didn't. Has Rory made all the signature events? You recall? I think he. I has, think yeah. Right? I think he's played them all. Yeah. yeah, he's played them all so far. Okay. I believe. 
Uh, Hideki's coming off that 38th, though, at the Masters, which was very disappointing. Uh, we all thought yeah. he was a really good play there. So uh, if it didn't work out for him there, um, I'm not sure about this week. But you are getting 35 to 1. And Ben On is now joining the big boys at 35 to 1. <laughs> but he has a combined scoring total of 14 over par here and has only made the cut once in five appearances, including a withdraw. Yeah, and I haven't, I haven't seen enough from him in crunch time on Sunday to think that he, he can win a signature event yet. You know, I think he's, and he's got to win something a bit easier before he can win something like this. But yeah, this I, yeah, I agreed. That combination is uh, keeping him out. But he's with the big boys here at 35 to 1 on top of it. Right, exactly. Uh, Jordan Spieth is 40 to 1. How about that? Uh, but he should be because of yep. the way he's playing. Uh, and by the way, he missed a cut here last year at seven over par. He's now missed four out of his last six cuts. And and we all, I mean, at least I thought this was going to be a much better year for him. He got off to a good start. And then I don't know what's going on. We, um, oh, oh, I mean, we keep hearing about that wrist issue. That, maybe you know, that's it. I guess, I guess the doctors have told him he can't make it worse by playing, but I definitely think it's it's been an issue. Yeah, well, in that, I mean, in that respect, I don't know what, it, what, what you do. I mean, do you still right. get it fixed? Because uh, it's not working out. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yep. Um, now this is surprising. Alex Noren has as what is he doing down here at forty to one? Uh, we know on the other uh, uh, events like last week, he was one of my top picks. Almost took him for one and done, and that was okay. You know he's playing well this year. I picked him up on my fantasy team as you know. But what's he doing? Especially because he's he's not a long hitter. He shouldn't even be here. Nope. No. The, the guy I like in this range is Akshay. Um, I I think he opened at 50, and I was really looking at him at 50. Um, you know, he's a guy you know, has what won twice, including you know about about a month ago. I think he's a guy who is going to elevate his game and be a guy competing in signature events eventually. You know, I think, um, and he, he's just he's hitting it as well as anyone really. He's he's sixth in my model for the week, um, and, and and I do think he's capable of winning these type of big events. All right, so. We've been through uh, all three of your picks. So you have, again, Clark Fitzpatrick, Zalatoris. We've seen three of my picks, the Gala, Thomas, and Fleetwood. The other two that I have, and I'm going to go with him this week, and that's Ricky at 55-1. to I, one. I like the fact that he's coming off that uh, top 20 at RBC, and maybe, because he's trending in the right direction, maybe he's got – his game back and we know this is a really good venue for him and you're getting 55 to one so um that's why i decided last year he was 14th at eight under par here so that's and he's a, he's a uh, champ back in 2012 so i'm going to roll the dice with him this week and i'm also my top long shot is going to be patrick rogers so rogers is 100 to one he did uh finish second here in his very first appearance I think that was way back, maybe five, six years ago. His last appearance was fifth at the RBC. He, I, he, he withdrew one event. I haven't heard anything, whether or not, you know, I haven't heard anything really injury-wise that, he's, you know, it's, it's something's really wrong with him. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was a little bit of he needed a break for some reason, but it's 100 to 1. So I think he's worth the gamble. Yeah, we'll say with Ricky, uh, he, he seemed to figure out the irons lately. The iron play has been good. The driver's still been an issue, but at least he's got the irons figured out. And uh, who else do you like? Uh, I looked at Lowry down here, just another guy I like on tough golf courses. Um, but I, I really, again, these signature events on courses like this, I, I try not to uh, go too much down the odds. We're here. I think one of the you know top guys is going to win. Yeah, the other guys I was looking at, Harris English, uh, Chris Kirk. I would have went with McCarthy, but I don't like the uh, – the. He, this is not suited for his game. Uh, mm-hmm. Post on, same thing. I like the way he's trending, but it's not suited for his game. Lucas Glover, exact same thing, same reason, even though he's won here before back in 2011, but that was a long time ago. And maybe if you want a deep long shot, Webb Simpson. Um, this is an event – if you had to pick any event to win, this would be it. So um, that's why uh, – you know, if he can get off to a good start, maybe he could uh, do something crazy. Uh, okay. But unlikely. Okay. So next week, we got the PGA Championship. I think we're looking good with Jan. 
So as long as everything still holds up, we'll have Jan Stevenson to talk next week, probably Monday if we can fit it in and we'll get a day in earlier. If not, definitely Tuesday. So check back with us again next week for our preview of the PGA Championship uh, right here on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. So Jared, appreciate it as always. We'll see you next week. Yep, sounds good, Greg. Good luck.